Yo, guys, welcome back to Undefeated Locals. It's the boys, Marvin and Edgar, finally at it again with some insane news. What do we got today, Edgar? So today they came out with an article uh, showing off the 2025 organized play and local play changes that are coming down the road, right? Yeah, absolutely. They outlined the entire 2025 organized play experience, like Edgar stated, from your locals all the way to the top, the world's 2025. So that's what we're going to be ripping into today. Um, we're just going to kind of go down in line. It's the same article. We'll post it in the description below. You guys can go read this article, Josh, and now Levi, who's once again, uh, he's he's changed positions. He's part of the organized play team now. They also outlined all of this stuff in a neat little video that you can find at the bottom of this article. But yeah, let's just rip right into it. First thing that they're going to be talking about is the fact that they really wanted to, like, simplify all of this, right? Yeah. They really wanted a system both for locals and for the competitive players out there. First of which we've like it, we've entirely removed an event, right? Local qualifiers are no longer a thing. You can see in this uh this little slideshow here, we've got scrambles, pre-release events and weekly play at our local scene. Yeah, and, and so they kind of explain it in the article uh, in the life of an event, right? So you, every event's going to have a pre-release one week before uh, you move from there into your weeklies, and then you'll have kind of your scrambles are, are like specialized events, right? Yeah, uh, absolutely. A little bit, a little bit more oomph in prizing, a little bit better rewards, but not locking an entire regional behind these events, not giving you points towards the world's qualification. This is just, as they've stated, these scrambles are really to bring new players into the competitive scene. Still higher stakes, right? They've mentioned better pricing, more flashy pricing, but maybe not a seat at the table at world's level. So we've really, really good. Like, we're going to talk about, like, both the good and the bad and all the in-between in this article. So this is a great time to mention. I absolutely love that we've removed the toxic era of locals, right? Yeah, yeah. Local qualifiers has has been a lot of fun, right? It's it's brought people back to locals. I get that. We've even experienced it in town here ourselves in the Reno play group. We've had more player like a higher player base, more players joining, but it also created a very very high level of potential toxicity in other communities including our own of always bringing these high level decks. Nobody's having like their fun decks being brought. And it's locals, right? Locals yeah. should be fun. These events should be enticing for everybody to join in new players most of all we're trying that's what we're doing right we're trying to grow this card game we're trying to get new people in what an insane way to do that of like really just bringing the fun back to locals yeah and, and like on top of all of that it's uh it's part of the reason we haven't been able to do content uh, as regularly is because we are constantly going to these oh absolutely the over the last month We've attended, like, seven. It's been crazy. Yeah. If you want to, like, be in the world's leaderboard this year, you have to be attending a ton of these events. And, yeah, it's definitely lessened the amount of time where I can, like, have fun in the card game. Exactly. So I'm happy to have that back. But we're going to get right into that as we get further into this article. So, yeah, exactly what Edgar said. It's your pre-release into your weeklies, into your scrambles. They have uh, state they state in this article that scrambles are uh, spotlight events. Josh, the leader of their organized play team, has let us know in the Discord that they default to spotlight, but they are not required to be spotlight. So if your community is just like standard gamers out there, you can play these events in the standard format. I'm guessing it's just like a setting that your LGS has to fix inside the event itself. Yeah, and they, they kind of go into that a little more by saying that these events are, are they're, they're more meant for gathering rather than a tournament. It's a place for new players to sh show up and get their first taste of a, a tournament-style experience. Yeah, absolutely. Um which is, so for some for some communities that's going to be a huge change from what they're doing regularly for us all of our all of our locals are tournament style yeah, all the time. So sure are. It's definitely a, a cool way for for other communities, other play groups to start getting more of that experience. Yeah, more into the competitive scene, which again, I love. People should be playing every format of this card game. They're all so so much fun. Um ripping right into 
what you're here for, right? We're we're a pretty competitive channel, so we we're also looking for the top tier. What's changing at the competitive level? First thing you're gonna notice in all of these slides that we're showing you on screen is that nationals is not an event, and that is not a mistake. They did not forget to include that on the slides. Nationals is gone forever. Uh, there's no longer gonna be a national event. What they're doing is they're making more regionals, right? Exactly. They want they've said in the article they want an event a month. We have no idea what the specifics on this are, right? We're yeah. gonna again we're we'll talk about like the the kind of negatives here. There's no specifics whatsoever. So is this an event a month per region? Is this an event a month across the entire planet Earth? We have no idea yeah. what this means. Uh so and, and like they they mentioned in the article that they're going to kind of try and focus more events in, in the higher, higher population yeah. areas. Uh, so you know, it, it, if you are in a a an area that has you know a few hundred players within driving distance, uh, maybe you'll see more regionals than say somewhere that doesn't. We would still like to see them spread out enough that everyone can get involved because of especially considering how how the road to worlds is going to be looking in 2025. We'll get into that when we start talking about worlds, but more events, I think is sick. And they, and they said the reason they're cutting out nationals and it makes sense to me is nationals did not feel different from regionals. Yeah, I completely agree. Honestly, for the one that we've been to physically, it felt worse, right? Yeah. Like it was so sporadic. There were so many people. So it was hard for UBS games and the tournament organizer to really, really get things done in any timely manner. Just did not feel special. It did not feel right. So I'm very glad that we're just getting more events across the board. And like like Edgar said, we're going to rip right into Worlds here. It's right here in the article. Worlds is open invite, guys. Everybody gets a Nationals now because Worlds, they, they, they not open invite, sorry. Yeah. Uncapped. Uncapped, yes. It's uncapped. So there's no more 64-player Worlds, 32-player Worlds. Anybody can go earn their invite to the Worlds event. And because of champion points, the next thing that the article is going to bring up, it's going to be that much easier to do. Like I said before, you can no longer earn champion points at your local qualifier. Those were seasonal points. They've removed those entirely, thank God. What you can do now is you can earn champion points both at championship events and regionals. Um, we, again, once again, have no idea what this entails. Yeah, we, yeah, we don't know any of the point totals yeah. or, or what you're going to be aiming for. They're going to go into that, and we'll talk about it when they release that information. Yep, uh, Lenoko said in the main cord, dis like, in the main Discord today, that there might be something, like, in the January area, like, right around where, where our Nationals and Worlds is falling. Yeah. But they have said that we're going to, like, the Pokemon style, right? Of there is a point requirement. You're going to know way ahead of time this is the amount of points that you need to be able to attend day one of Worlds. And that's a sick goal to have. Oh, yeah. How very, very cool that I... I right now I'm sitting at exactly 89 points for 2024 Worlds, guys. I'm sitting at 89 points, and I have no idea if that's good enough. Yeah. I'm currently top 15, but that means nothing. There's so many more qualifiers happening in areas. There's an entire another season of championships about to go down. I have no idea if I'm safe. So I'm just attending event after event after event. Now you won't have to do that. You can they've said it in the article. Like if, if 50 points is the goal, this is 50 points. You're gonna earn 200 points for winning this regional. Now you've got a goal in mind. I need to get this amount of top cuts, right? Yeah. I need to do this amount of local championships. Yeah. Very, very cool to have like just an actual solid goal in mind when going to these things and even for you points grinders out there there is something for you inside of this organized play system in the fact that we can skip day one entirely yeah absolutely insane you can earn enough championship points to skip the swiss rounds of day one and automatically qualify for day two you get to go to worlds and just have a weekend right yeah. like i'm gonna this has been my first two days doing side events i don't exactly. have to care about any of this yeah the the, the new system is amazing and it, so if you guys watched our breakdown of the 2024 OP, we we had our concerns and they they were realized in this in this season, right? Like uh having the top X number of people means that you never know, like Marvin said, whether you're going to worlds or not. Uh there are certain people that have hundreds of points that 
could get knocked out if they if they start slacking, right? So yeah. they are they're still grinding out these events. And like as much as I like playing the card game, it is hard for us and especially hard for other people to attend event after event after event week after week after week it becomes a a huge grind so if they set the the day one point total to something real achievable uh th then it's more filtered out by well who can actually go to worlds which it, it's a limiter but it's a necessary limiter, yeah right for sure you can't not have that it's just part of life you know yeah absolutely it's uh, every card game so it, it'll it'll allow a player e even even more of the uh, e even a, a more casual player to plot out what attend events they have to attend what they can do space it out they don't have to they don't have to go to Atlanta and Seattle or, or St Louis and and Las Vegas and Texas and you know whatever other whatever they can drive to uh, it'll be a lot easier for a lot of our players to show up. And that's what we want, right? We want a huge world event. Yeah, absolutely. Not only do we want huge world events, but we want bigger regionals, right? We yeah. want more reason to attend these regionals, and that's what this is offering. And speaking of the casual player, we're going to get right into championship events. Something that was a astronomical miss for this last season is telling a casual player that they could attend these championship events and walk away with actually nothing if they don't do well. Yeah. You only earn championship points for top four in the 2024 season. You you get no promos. The only the only victory thing is a playmat to first place. Not only did you tell casual players, just don't attend these, but even, like, me and Edgar who are consistently, like, winning ours, why am I winning this event? Yeah. What is this for? <laughs> just for points? No, no, no. Not anymore. We're just attending your local championships. You're going to guaranteed get one championship point and a promo. We don't, again, no specifics. Have no idea what these promos are, but the promos have been hype recently. Let's just yeah. face it. The promos are going to be sick. And just that alone is like the biggest upgrade. You, uh, attendance pricing should always be a thing. Yeah. You should be giving somebody something for attending your event locally or otherwise. And at the bottom of this part, they even mention here, doing well in these events can earn you more championship points, more of the placement promos, which is sick. We yeah. no, we're no longer going to get one victory card. I could walk away with four of these bad boys. And potentially secure your invite to the world championship. You might just be able to play at locals. Yeah. That's yeah. crazy. Huge, huge changes, good changes. And again, it, th this all kind of stemmed from uh, their their previous world's events have been capped, right? Not being capped is huge for us. That gives us so much more wiggle room to have more fun events, more bigger events, more more uh, attendance. You know, people we have people in our locals who have just given up doing these events because they're nowhere near. They're, they're sitting at, you know, 15, 20 points, and they're like, well, I'm not going to I'm not going to be able to go. I'm going to save up. I'm going to go to one event. It's going to be it's going to be Nats. I'm going to try and win that. They're going to lose two or three rounds, and they're going to drop. And th yeah. that whole trip is now like, you know, it, it, it's a disappointment, and that's what we want to avoid. We, Absolutely. In in this coming up season, these same players, they're going to be like, oh, well, I know exactly how many I'm going to need. I'm going to need 10, 15, 20, whatever, however many points for day one, and they're still going to be able to go. They're still going to be able to play. That's amazing. Yeah, it is. Absolutely. And speaking of disappointing prizing, we've <laughs> got the regionals for 2025. That was just a joke, guys. The prizing for regionals sounds sick. Um, in this article, you'll hear them explain that the main thing that they wanted to do with regionals is make them feel more grand. Uh, EV is something that Edgar and I have talked about a lot in our content for the competitive spot of this game. Estimated value. The estimated value of playing in the any event in the past outside of paying, uh, allowing Kevin Broberg to buy a house in the <laughs> world's number one has been awful, right? Estimated value is like complete, like there is nothing. There is, there's been no estimated value for attending these events. You get so few of the promos. Most of the promos in the past have not really ended up mattering again, like value wise. It did a terrible job of convincing both the casual and competitive player to not only attend these events, but attempt to do well. 
it looks like they're doing like a complete turnaround on this. We're bringing back the prize wall. So all every single regional in 2025 will have a prize wall where they've mentioned uh, alternate art treatment, foils, play mats, and deck boxes. Like this bad boy right here, guys. It's absolutely insane that something this nice, something this fancy, was only ever given out at one Worlds event. Why? Yeah. Why aren't we handing these out at regionals? That's crazy. Yeah. Uh, but apparently we are not going to, which is sick. Absolutely insane for casual players, for collectors, and for competitors like me and Edgar. Um, even if you're a competitor and you're not a collector, this will convince collectors to come to these events and purchase from the competitive players, right? Exactly. We have some of those locally who are going to our, our next regional. Yeah, just, just to, to collect promos exactly. to sell to other locals. That's sick. That's exactly what I want in our card game. We have it in every other like t bigger TCG, and it's something that needed to be brought to universes. So, so happy that it's here. Um... And again, the negative side of this, right? I'm sure you guys, some of you have been thinking, some of like the people that have stuck around with us since the beginning, we've seen a prize wall. And you've even heard me and Edgar complain about it <laughs> to great lengths. They did terribly the first time. There was next to nothing. There was just some promos. And most of those like got beaten out by like the higher level players that earned points early. They don't address that in the article. If I was them, I wouldn't either. But hopefully that they, they are aware of it, right? Yeah. This is where we're kind of turning the, the new table here. They've been nothing but, like, bangers recently from UBS Games, mm -hmm. right? We're going to talk about, like, their, their their past because, like, we have to, you know? We've done we've seen the prize wall thing. It didn't work before. But I'm so, so hopeful that it's going to work this time. I truly, truly believe that they can make this successful. And just the things they've mentioned, right? Alternate arts, foil... Like, like all, all these foil cards, deck boxes, play match, that's a huge start in the right direction. Yeah. More than just the here are the promos that you got at your other <laughs> events. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Here's locals um, and promos. Yeah. Like, I, I have 400 points from World Season 1 <laughs> sitting in a deck box that you didn't want to turn any of them in for anything, right? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I have so, so many promos from the past events. So hopefully that'll all change. Uh, and then last but not least, guys, they go right into the big one, the big show, Universes Worlds 2025. We've kind of already touched on this throughout this video because it's hard not to. We're a competitive channel. <laughs> but yeah, it's going to be a two-day event for all of you competitors out there. Day one, if you've qualified for only day one, you're going to uh, be sent through a normal Swiss tournament. It's going to play out through your normal rounds, through your normal bracket. And the top players in that bracket are who are the final players that are going to qualify for day two if you haven't already qualified. Again, we can qualify before this date just in champion points. If you do, you just skip the entire day one of Swiss and go right into day two. In the video, they touch on something that's like pretty obvious for some, but maybe not for others, so we'll touch on it here. If you're, if you've made it like three quarters through the tournament, right? You're you, in, like, say in Swiss, you need to earn nine points in Swiss to qualify for day two. And you earned your nine points in Swiss, but there's still two rounds left. They're going to automatically drop you from that event and say you've qualified for day two. Go enjoy the rest of your day. And they're going to drop you. This is automatically dropping you is actually pretty huge um, for uh, like compared to other card games. Because this is going to remove quite a few, like again, like toxic scenarios that can play out. A... You can't just decide, I'm going to play this out and axe these next two players from this event, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to ensure that these two people don't get join me in day two. And B, and honestly, I think more important, I can't get my nine points and then be in the last round against Edgar and be like, oh, no, nah, dude, Edgar took it. Yeah. Sorry, guys, e Edgar has it. Edgar, yeah. Edgar got it. Can't do that. You can't concede for the homies. Um, I think that's absolutely wonderful. Automatically just drop. Everybody that's supposed to play out does play out, yeah. and whoever wins those rounds continues on. Very, very cool system to do for your world's events, because it should just be the best players, right? It should be the players actually winning the tournament. Yeah, we, we, we talked about this in, uh, again, our first video about this OP season. Uh, there, We don't want anyone cheesing the system, right? And, like... Uh, there have been cheeses, you know, we we've we know they're out there, we've seen them, we've heard about them. We want to avoid them. And this new setup 
is amazing for that, right? They, there's very little wiggle room. I can, of course, there, there, there's still, there's still some wiggle room, but who cares at this yeah. point? Who cares because you're not cutting out anyone else from playing? Yes, by, exactly. By cheesing, right? No, nope. everyone gets to play, and yeah, that's the which is part. awesome. Everybody can qualify, and then yeah, we continue on to day two. And day two is to create our top cut bracket for our world tournament, right? It's another Swiss tournament. It's another full, you know, five, eight, whatever round event. And that is those, those final players are going to be our top cut bracket for day three. Day three is going to pretty much primarily focus on those top cut players. You're either playing, you've made it to top cuts, or you're watching these players fight it out to see who is actually crowned the world champion for Universes 2025. Which really does make it a pretty like grand like spectacle, oh, right? Yeah. A three-day event where the pinnacle of this thing is to watch whoever is going to take down the whole event. How sick. Uh, Storylines is something we've talked about before in other card games and other tournament scenes. You always have like you, you, the known players, right? And we have them on our card game. Kevin Broberg comes to mind, Tim Keefe, you know, quite a few players that like are, are cut above the rest. And those just kind of fly under the rug when it comes to worlds and they shouldn't like you yeah. should be talking about these players, right? You should be talking about their runs at these events. The, the Nick Reagan last year, right? We, we made it all the way through the last chance qualifier to then be crowned to the world champion. That's the story I want to hear. That's the storyline I want to see. And a three day event super allows for that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so all good news across the board, uh, for this stuff, guys, uh, we want, we, of course, we want to hear more. We want, you know, we want point totals. We want event locations. We want event numbers. Yes, event locations, guys. <laughs> please, please do not ruin this by telling me that there's an event in Las Vegas a month before the event is planned yeah. out. Yeah, we, we really, uh, like, uh, we understand shit happens. Yeah, absolutely. Like we, as players, if you want to have more of us show up, Give us that information much, much earlier. It'll give us time to... Because we're, we're not made of money. Yeah, know? yeah, exactly. Nobody is. <laughs> no, no one's made of money. Time. No one's made of time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, so just please. give us this information as soon as possible. Make your events big. Let yeah. us make your events big. Um, But yeah, again, there's a lot of like, what ifs? Oh, they've done this before type of deal. I get it. We get it. We've complained about it before, but I'm so tired of complaining about this game, guys. Yeah. I want it to be successful, and this article is a huge step in the right direction. There's not a single L here. It is only wins for universes, and I hope that that all pans out for 2025 as well. Let us know in the comments what you think. Are you going to be playing in universes 2025? Let us know what your local scenes are looking like. Get those back up. Let us know what's going on in that regard. And we'll catch you guys next time. See you in Atlanta.